So in this tutorial I show you how to use the OpenCore bootloader and for instance you can change your Mac device ID to a Mac Pro 7 one that's the one from 2019 and every update shows up and you can just regularly install updates like on a real Mac 7 one. If you have a Mac Pro from 2012, the Mac Pro 5 one that I have here and you upgraded it with a regular PC graphics card that was recommended by Apple to have metal support, you get your boot selector and your boot screen back. So there are a lot of upsides to that and let's just dive in to install the open core bootloader it's a quite easy process. Let's start. So everything is done with the open core legacy patcher from Dortania. And I give you the link down in the description. We just click get started and you see description, what is open core and so on, some warnings and how do I get started? We go down here in the right lower corner to the supported models. So please check what model you have, what your hardware is and if it is supported. There's um, a long list of MacBooks and MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, Mac Minis, iMacs and Mac Pros that are supported or that's partially supported. So uh, check if your model is supported and then um, yeah, you see benefits and drawbacks. We don't need that and we go to download and build macOS installers. It says here 16 gigabyte USB drive is required. And um, the good thing here is the first uh, script here, the first command that let you install and download the macOS version you want to install. Um, another way is you just go to the description and the video description and I give you the link uh, for the latest macOS um, from my Google Drive. Okay, so let's just highlight the whole command, right click or you can do control click, that's the same, do copy and we go into the terminal and I will just enlarge it that you can see it better on the video and you do a control click and say paste and then you have this big command here, just hit enter and it wants your password where you log in with your Mac because it's an admin command. Just enter your password. It downloads some scripts from Apple. And here you see um, the list of macOS versions you can download directly from Apple. And you see it up here that it's from HTTP apple.com contents it is a true apple website and the true apple list that you download here so you see catalina big sur high sierra mojave so 11.4 is the latest um, big sur version you can get here and it just says choose a product to download and the product number is product number three um, so we just enter three and now you see here it's downloading 11.5 um, gigabytes macOS Big Sur 11.4. Uh, okay, it's done. The macOS Big Sur is downloaded and you can find it if you go to the finder, obviously, and you go into your home folder. If you don't know how to reach it, you can go up here to go and click home. And there you see is a new folder that's called macOS installer. If you go into that folder, you will find the install macOS 11.4 DMG file. We just make a double click on it and you see it's opening and it's verifying the file. That is the file we need and we will just move this file to the applications folder. Just hold it and drag it to applications. So if you downloaded the macOS Big Sur from my Google Drive repository, you can go to the downloads folder here and you will find a zip file that's called install macOS Big Sur 11.4.zip. And you just click on it and it will extract. And then we will have the exact same file that you saw before just take this file 
and drag it into your applications folder. And then you are on the same page with those guys who downloaded it via the script. Next step is now to install the macOS installer to the USB drive to prepare everything. And so we click here on the left side onto building and we have to format our USB drive and uh, there will be all data loss. So if you have some data on the USB drive, make sure to make a backup. And after we erased it, we use the tool from Apple, as you see here, the create install media. Okay, how are we gonna do it? We go to the launch pad to other and we start the disk utility. And here you see all the hard drives you have in your device. And make sure you go to the top corner here to view and you click show all devices. And then you have a lot of devices on the left and look under external. And here we find my USB drive that is completely empty and click the upper entry here, say erase, call it my volume that makes it easier for the command we need afterwards. In the list we choose macOS extended journal and we use GUID partition map. Okay, these are the settings and you click erase. And now the USB drive is erased, reformatted, that we can use it for the create install media. Click done and we can close the utility. And then you have here the command on the website. You can also get the command from Apple's website. It's copied from there. We just highlight it, make a control click on it, says copy. And we go back to the terminal. I would just enlarge it a little bit. Okay. And another control click, paste. And you see here at the end, it says my volume. That is the name of the USB drive. If you entered a different USB drive name, you have to change my volume here to whatever name you chose. Okay. We say enter. And again, it's an admin command. That's because you see sudo at the beginning and you have to enter your Mac password where you log in and it says ready to start. Everything will be erased. Press Y to continue. And then it takes about 10 minutes. It erasing everything, installing the macOS installer on that USB drive and then we can go on. Okay, it's done. Now you could use this USB drive with any supported Mac and install macOS Big Sur on it. Um, but as we want to use it on unsupported devices, we have to install the open core bootloader. So we go back to the website and we go on the left side here, building and installing open core. And First, we have to download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher itself. If you click on it, it opens up the GitHub repository. And you see here, the latest one is 0.1.6, as far as I record the video. And you go down here and you download the OpenCore Patcher app zip. It's just a 15 megabyte download, okay. You go to Downloads. And you click on the Open Core Patcher app zip and it extracts the patcher. And there you have the Open Core Patcher. Just make a double click and it will start uh, the patcher. But first, there's a security advice. Uh, it's downloaded from the internet. You want to open it? Yes, you want to open it. And you see here it opens another window of the console. I would just enlarge this. And there you see the open core legacy patcher 016. And you see here, as I am on a Mac Pro 5.1, it already detected that model and selected it. And it also checked that this model is supported. Um, first, we have to do is to download the open core and build it. 
So it always downloads the latest version of Open Core. So you just select one, build Open Core, and you see it's downloading everything and it is already done. Just hit enter and you're back in the menu. And it's quite easy and straightforward. Now we want to install Open Core to the USB drive. So we say two for the option and it starts the disk picker checking all disks on your Mac and then the USB drive should show up. So now you have to select the disk where you want to install it to. Important. If you know what you're doing, you can just select your Mac OS disk right now where your actual OS is running from. Install Open Core there, start it and you instantly have installed Open Core. I suggest you install it to the USB drive. So if you just unplug the USB drive and boot it up regularly, no open core anymore. So now be sure you select your USB drive. Here it's easy. I have a 500 gigabyte SSD where my macOS is installed. I have a 1.5, a 2 and a 1 terabyte hard drive where the data is. And I have a 30.8, so that's a 32 gigabyte USB drive. And now you have to select the disk and you see here it's eight, disk eight. I want to install it to the USB drive. Your number might be different. So make sure you select the USB drive and not any hard drive. So I type in eight and here, the one with the star, likely candidate, that's the FE partition of my USB drive. Don't worry, it's only 210 megabytes that was created during the create install media. Okay, that is the partition where the Mac OS boots from and the big partition is um, the one where the data is. So we say one and we need the password again because it's a admin command and now it's copying open core to the FE partition. It's already done. Press enter to continue and we're good. There are some advanced options you can choose. If you say five patcher settings, you can, for instance, enable the verbose mode. That's where all those messages come up and you can see if you get a, a freeze or a boot loop or whatever, what might be the cause. So you can enable the verbose mode and the open core debug. So it gives you more debug messages if there's any problems. Um, and you see here, the set show picker mode is true. That is the boot selector, but the boot selector of open core. And that's what I mentioned before. If you have a regular PC graphics card in your Mac Pro, like I do, you have a boot selector back and a boot screen back. Um, and you can, for instance, with number seven, allow open core on native models. What means that? That means if you have maybe a Mac Pro 6 one from 2013 or a 7 one from 2019, where Big Sur is natively supported, um, normally it wouldn't allow open core to install because you don't need it. Um, with this option, you can switch this on and you can install open core on a supported model. Maybe if you want to change your Mac 6 one to a 7 one. Okay. And some advanced patch settings you can go through by yourself. We just hit Q for quit. And that was it. We just hit another Q for quit. So if you own a Mac Pro model from 2010 to 2012, the big aluminum one that I have here, you most probably have upgraded it to a metal capable graphics card. Apple on its homepage shows a list of compatible, officially compatible graphic cards that you can put into this Mac to have it metal enabled and to officially support it until macOS Mojave. So this is the uh, fastest you can get. It's the RX 580, the Radeon RX 580 but it's a regular PC graphic card. So it doesn't have a Mac BIOS on it. So the downsides of that is that 
you don't see the boot screen, you don't see the Apple logo and um, the bar when there's like an upgrade and you don't see the boot selector that we need. In order to see that you have to switch back to an original Mac graphics card and when the installation is done I just switch back to the Sapphire Radeon RX 580 to have metal support and it's way faster than this one. Down in the video description I give you the link to an OpenCore Mac Pro 5.1 package that I uh, got here from uh, the forums and here on the Mac Rumors forum there is a big thread about the open core on the Mac Pro and um, I got the Mac Pro package from there fine-tuned it a little bit but all the credits go to those guys here in the forums. If you download it you will find a pre-configured config plist file for the open core and you can choose if you uh, use the Mac Pro 5.1 config plist so your device remains a 5.1 or if you switch to a Mac Pro 7 one, that's the one from 2019, it spoofs that you have a brand new machine. On the Mac Pro 7 one, here in the OpenCore post install guide, there is a lot of things going on with the memory errors that show up with Big Sur on a Mac Pro. I already fixed that for you in the pre-configured config plist. Um, and I will do uh, another tutorial how to fine-tune that a little bit later. One more thing, as you also can find here, macOS 11.3 and newer has broken support for the Mac Pro. There are a lot of things going on because Apple changed uh, the way um, it accesses NVMe hard drives and um, external hard drives or uh, PCI Express hard drives. So it might be that your Mac Pro doesn't work correctly with Big Sur 11.3 or newer. So also down in the video description I give you the link to my Google repository download 11.2.3 or simply in the list you saw where you could download the macOS, you can choose macOS 11.2.3. That's the latest that runs stable on a Mac Pro, especially with NVMe drives or uh, PCI Express drives or something like this. In the forums, they don't know the reason yet why it makes such a big trouble. My Mac works with 11.4 and when you just uh, use an empty hard drive, you can just try it out if it works. Um, but be sure uh, that it really works because there's a lot of stuff going on. So if you click on my uh, download repository, you get a file that's called OC for Open Core Mac Pro 5.1 Package Zip. If you click on this, the window coming up with the folder and there are two folders in it. You see an FE folder that is the open core and all the files that are not included with the uh, legacy patcher that we just created on the USB drive. So you have a config 5.1 plist and a config 7.1 plist. And just uh, you can choose whichever model you want it to spoof, you want it to have and just um, rename it to config plist. So if you go here on config 7.1 plist and just remove the 7.1 that it is config plist, that is the plist OpenCore uses to boot and it spoofs a Mac Pro 7.1 from 2019. And what we're going to do now, we mount the FE partition from our newly created USB drive and copy all this stuff into it so you have a pre-configured config plist for a Mac Pro 5.1 or a patched 4.1. If you do not own a Mac Pro 5.1, don't do that, okay? Because then the legacy patcher has installed everything you need and you would just uh, mix up all those configs that do not fit to your hardware, okay? So how are we gonna do it? We just start the terminal 
and I just enlarge it a little bit so you can see it. And we type disk util list and there's a lot of stuff showing up, all your hard drives. Um, and what we are looking for is external physical. That is the USB drive. It's an external drive. And as I didn't change anything, it's still disk eight. Maybe you remember from the installer. And the EFI drive here, the identifier is disk eight S one. That might be different to yours. So uh, maybe you remember the uh, number you selected on the installer or you just check here for external physical drive. And now we do sudo for super user again, disk util mount disk 8s1 and it wants my password again. And now this FE partition is mounted. If I go back here into my finder, there is the FE partition. And now I just go back here and we use this FE folder, do a control click, copy. Then we go to the FE volume that we just mounted, but let's first make a backup of the uh, legacy patcher config plist. So we go into the FE folder, OC, and here you find the config plist that the legacy patcher created for us. So we just rename this one maybe config LP, that is legacy patcher. Then we can go back on the EFI drive and we just do a control click paste item. And it says, okay, there's already an EFI folder. We just want to merge. So all the new files get into that folder. We click merge. It's only six megabytes. And if we now go into the FE folder, OC for open core, you see the config LP plist we just renamed. You have the config plist, that is the 71 plist we just chose, and we have the 51 plist. So whenever you want a different configuration to boot, you just do the same. You use the disk util to list and mount the FE partition of the USB drive or maybe later on of your hard disk, go into that folder and rename the setting you want to, to boot config plist and just rename all other plists to whatever they are. If you just restart now, keep the USB drive inserted, hold the option key for the boot selector and select FE boot, the FE boot, that's the open core bootloader, and then select your hard drive. Then it boots up regularly like you did before, but with the open core spoofing a Mac Pro 7.1. And that's where you can check if your open core config plist works with your device without changing any hard drives. I switched cameras and that's what we want to see. I just plugged in the USB drive and an empty SSD, an empty hard drive. And as there's nothing to boot on this hard drive, the Mac boots from the USB drive, it starts open core and it shows then the only available option to install macOS Big Sur. And I will just zoom into the monitor so um, you can see all the details and go out of the picture and let's install macOS.
So you did it. You installed macOS on an unsupported hardware. If there are any questions or comments, just write it down in the comment section of this video. I try to answer everything. Um, and now we want to talk a little bit about post installation. Okay. Here on Dortania's website, where we've working through all the steps, the next step is post installation. So the first one is booting without the USB drive, and it's quite simple. Um, hopefully you have copied the uh, legacy patcher on your USB drive. Just start it. All is here uh, explained on the website, um, and that is very easy. Um, you can switch off in the patcher settings. You can switch off the um, show picker mode. If you switch that off, it just boots seamlessly into your Mac OS and there is no option to choose. You can every time just start the patcher, change the settings, rebuild open core and reinstall it again to your hard drive. Then the new settings will take place. Um, there is one section post install volume patches. It's experimental still from Dortania and it's mainly if you have an unsupported non-metal graphics card like in a MacBook or in an uh, iMac and an old iMac and you need patches for that. Um, here everything is explained how to install that. You see it's number three post install volume patch and then you patch the system volume but it's still in development you can unpatch it or you can just reinstall macOS the same as you did before if there are heavy uh, problems with that. And very good news as the Apple Developer Conference was just a week ago, um, they already have a page set up about Monterey. Those guys um, who have the uh, developer account um, can already download the uh, closed beta of macOS Monterey. It's macOS 12. And the open core legacy patcher 017 and newer has support for Monterey. But as soon as Monterey will hit the market in fall, you will just see the update coming up and you can just update your Mac, your unsupported Mac to Monterey. Here on the website, you see which models have full support in Monterey. And for the Mac Pro users, especially like me, Mac Pro 3.1 and newer, but you new, need a new wireless card and a Bluetooth card. I got this here. That is a little package where you have a uh, wireless Bluetooth card, the same chipset that Apple uses and you have a um, card for in between to install this into the Mac Pro. I will do another video how to upgrade your Mac Pro with a new Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I will do another video soon, like it's the second part of this tutorial. If there are questions, as I said, just write them down in the comments and one, two, three weeks afterwards, I do another, like an explanation video and I go um, through all the comments and try to answer the questions. For now, thank you for watching and I would really appreciate if you subscribe my channel and click the bell to get notifications if new videos come up. I just hit the 1K, more than 1000 followers, Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it took my channel, I just uh, checked it in the calendar, 611 days to hit a K, to hit a 1000 followers. Um, now I can do uh, the shorts, the short videos. I try to keep the channel updated more regularly with the shorts and stay tuned for the next videos. Bye bye.